Hey guys, this is Anna with Shadowick, and today is day two of my Witchtober dedication, and today's word is moon. So for the word moon, I wanted to share a candle I had crafted uh, called Hecate's Lantern. Hecate is a triple goddess um, from the Greek pantheon. Uh, some will correct you if you call her a goddess and say she's actually a titaness, and yes, that is correct. Uh, she has many, many different aspects, many, many different dominions. She is a goddess of the crossroads, a uh, goddess of the moon. She is a goddess of the threshold. She is um, the torchbearer. She has dominion with uh, time and space and all sorts of things. Um, but for me, I really take my time to honor her during the new moon. Uh, the god... Hecate is not a goddess that I work with regularly. She is not part of my uh, tribe in the here and now, but she has been part of my tribe in the past. Um, I think some gods, goddesses, energies, entities, whatever it is you work with, can come into your practice and into your life during periods of time, especially during periods of time of great upheaval and great transformation. Um, when you have a lot of lessons that really you need to learn and you need to learn them now, you can find um, certain goddesses kind of and, and gods and what, again, what whatever it is you work with coming into your practice. And then once you've taken that journey and, and it's been kind of completed or at least you're on your way there, you'll find they kind of slowly but surely fade away again. Um, my journey with Hecate was very much like that. And oddly, and, and, and so because of that, I, I keep her in my practice, even though I don't work with her currently. I, I hope that makes sense. I have my crossroads altar, um, the new moon, every time there's a new moon, that whole night is pretty much dedicated to her. Um, I, and my new moon candles get consecrated and put to her honor. Um, Hecate night in November is very much a thing I observe. Um, for Samhain, we take the crossroads altar and bring it outside and leave offerings there as well. Um, for me, on a personal level, I, I don't, I've tried doing this video multiple, multiple times. And every time I get into my personal story about the journey I took with her, it ends up being like a 20 minute video. And I don't want to do that to you guys again. Um, but for me, I do want it to be said, um, she, she really illuminated myself to see things I didn't want to accept or see within myself. Um, I think there's a lot of times when we as people, I don't think any of us wake up thinking I'm going to do something really messed up today. I'm going to make bad choices. I'm going to, you know, enable everyone around me and I'm going to play the victim the entire time. None of us wake up with those thoughts. Um, but they can happen in small little ways over time. And all of a sudden, that's what you're left with. Um, but it's sometimes very hard to own that. To own that you've put yourself in that bad position. You've made yourself into this kind of not so great person. And it's very hard to look in the mirror. Um, and I think at that time of my life, in my life, Hell had been trying to work with me, but it was like she wasn't able to take on all of the mess <laughs> and try to guide me through it. Um, so Hecate came to me, um, as well as the goddess Lilith, and I worked with the three of them and really saw what I had become and realized the part I had to play in it. And I'm so grateful for those energies coming to me and showing my, me that perspective and showing me what I had done and, and gotten, given me the strength to actually say, wow, I've become a real shit person. I've really made a mess of things, but not left it at that. I, I've seen far too many times people will make poor choices, make bad decisions, hurt people and not own it and not come back from that. Um, so I'm very, very grateful um, for Hecate that she did push me and, and show me, help to show me that. Because certainly 
Hal and Lilith also had their parts to play. But because of that, Lilith, as well as Hecate, will always have a place in my practice and in my home, even though we no longer work together. And I, I think, I, I don't know why, but that message just every time I try to do this video, it's like, no, this message needs to get out. So I don't know if someone needs to hear that as well. Like, hey, if a god or a goddess or an energy or entity comes in to help you with something and then they leave, that's a very healthy thing. That is fine. It happens. Embrace that, that process, because it can be so rewarding. So as I said, the new moon is really when I connect to Hecate, and that really is the time when I um, try to put her in the forefront of, of my practice and of my, my time. Um, the new moon is very energizing for me. The dark of the moon, I have some amazing intense dreams and divination times. And then the new moon comes and it's like all of that divination and dream work now is bubbling over with creativity and inspiration. Um, but, <laughs> um, but it's also a time for me to, as I said, honor Hecate. Uh, the new moon, when I first started uh, researching Hecate and really trying to understand why she was coming to me, um, I kept reading places and seeing people in videos and stuff saying, you know, the new moon is Hecate's night to be the torchbearer. She leads the dead who have not found their way to the underworld. They They perhaps have died in not so great ways, maybe violently too soon. They died of unnatural causes. So they're not aware necessarily that they're dead and Hecate will take the torch or take the lantern and guide them through to the underworld. Um, a lot of things that I read said, you know, this is a time to go to the crossroads, leave an altering, do this before sunset. Once you leave the offering, go home. Do not look back. Do not try to do anything else. That's it. That's the last thing you do outside <laughs> because the idea was if you saw this processional, if you saw Hecate in her dread state, um, it would be not such a great thing. It would be not, it, you know, the, the energies there aren't warm, fuzzy energies. They're, they're not great. Um, so honor them, but know your place to not be part of that, um, which I think is a very good lesson because I, I think a lot of times it's like, oh, power? I want to be a part of that. It's like, no, you need to learn some powers are not for you. Um, so I, I, I really dug that. So for my own personal practice, uh, the new moon, I will oftentimes leave an offering outside my door. Um, one of the things I read or listened to was the Hellenistic practice. Um, she's goddess of the threshold of the home. Um, so that's where her altar would be. That would be her sacred space. That's where she would protect and it kind of delved into her energies of, you know, being the goddess of the crossroads. Because when you come through the threshold, you're entering a new, a new phase. You're going down a new path. You're coming into someone's home, someone else's dominion. Um, so the idea of leaving an offering for her on the new moon outside my home felt right. Um, it's a night when usually purification is a big thing. Uh, smoke cleansing the house, reestablishing boundaries and protections... Uh, bath rituals to cleanse the self, um, taking some time to meditate and go inward and do some of that shadow working to see, okay, I've been working on this during the waning of the moon. What else is it I need to bring into fruition? What is it I need to release? It's a great time to release those things you've been working on. Um, and all of that that is done, I put to Hecate in, in gratefulness and honor for the work she she helped me through. Um, so being that this was a new moon candle, um, I did call it, uh, Hecate's lantern, uh, as her lantern in her new moon state, her, her torchbearer state is to give guidance. It, it is to give protection of those souls, to bring them from one realm into the other, um, and to do so safely. Um, and, and I like to think peacefully, like try to give them some amount of fulfillment, especially if, if, 
it is a situation where the soul was lost or wasn't aware it was dead. You know, that's a pretty jarring thing to realize, like, holy crap, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not alive anymore. That's a lot to take in. So, um, that, the idea of her taking those into her guardianship, I think is such a beautiful thing. Um, so I wanted to honor that, but it also, she does that so much in her devotees and, and, and so much in those who work with her. Um, she gives that bit of clarity and that bit of acknowledgement of, hey, no, this is the actual situation you're in. Um, and I think that delves into the crossroads aspect of her as well. Crossroads doesn't always mean a place in the underworld. It it can also be you're in a crossroads in your life. You have this decision to be to be made or you've made this decision and realize now you're not 100% behind it. Um, it's all these little things that we do on a daily basis um, she can help shine a light and give you that focus and give you that insight, um, or not give you, but like help you to see it for yourself. It, it's always really hard, um, for me to explain this because in no way do the energies I work with and gods and goddesses I work with ever like hit me upside the head and suddenly, oh, everything's clear now. No, it's a lot of work, but they can help you find the strength within yourself to confront these things. They can help you kind of shake your brain free of all the delusion that you may have built up to see the reality of a situation. Um, to they, they help you to see the divine within yourself to know you can get yourself out of whatever gunk you find yourself in um and her lantern for me really became a symbol of that um so on the new moon yes i honor her but i also honor but i also will light this candle not only on the new moon um but also when i need that illumination when i need that guidance um so yeah, and and like I said, this is a candle. I just said I this is a candle I'm keeping. I actually made it thinking, well, maybe I'll I'll put it on Etsy or maybe I'll sell it. And then if you can see the top of it, not all of my candles come out perfect. <laughs> the ones that kind of come out ovally or misshapen uh unless they speak to me. Um I know I had a I have a friend uh Jenna who I had made this creativity candle and it came real like an oval shape and it kind of I don't necessarily know what happened, but it kind of like branched out almost like a tree trunk. And I'm like, okay, this is a creativity candle. And I sat there and I looked at it. And I'm like, I can't sell this. But it spoke to me to go to her for some reason. So, so yeah, but, um, because this is an oval state and you can kind of see the back, it's a little, <laughs> it's a little lopsided. Um, but I think because of that, it also speaks to the transformation um, that Hecate helped to bring about in me. I was definitely an oblong character at that point. And she helped me see that I was not in the right and I was not doing right. Um, and helped me really to confront that shadow and own it. Because um, it's not so much like, oh, I'm being bad. I need to be good. It's also owning. I have done this. I am this right now, but I can be more. I can make amends. Um, and that really is something that she, she showed me with the help, obviously of Hal and Lilith. Um, but I, I kind of like in my transformation candles that I keep, they all kind of tend to be ones that have become misshapen or malformed. And I, I kind of like that as well, because the candle itself has gone through a bit of a transformation and it helps to inspire transformation within me as well. So yeah, that is my, I'm sorry for the witchy ramble. I was trying to keep it under 15 and I don't think I'm going to, but um, that is kind of my witchy ramble on Hecate and her lantern and connection to the new moon. Thank you guys. Bye.